Good morning. Bright eyes on our shiny faces, all in our shiny places. Can you believe that song I played 51 years ago? No. 50. I know it sounds awful, doesn't it? 82. Well, it's I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. What a great song. I mean, Road to Shambhala, Three Dog Night. I mean, how? You know, and here's 50-year-old music that still, I personally think, has a meaning today. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you put your does. meaning into it. Yeah. But um, tomorrow is Earth Day. Woohoo! Yay! We got an award, been quite a few years ago now, from the city of Richmond um, for Earth Day. Because we, I mean, we were doing, we were so far ahead of our time. We changed all of our bulbs to fluorescent at the time. Uh, we did recycling in our bins. I forgot all the things that we did to upgrade the building and... Don't ask me. We got a nice award. It was very nice. So, anyway, yeah. Look what Madsen did for us. Cool. Isn't that cute cool? So very nice, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I mean, yeah, and we've got, uh, I mean, with all this loud music day. we always have in the church and here, we've got a baby that's just sound asleep. <laughs> Probably wakes up at home with the, the simplest little noise. <laughs> there, but there's the secret. Play rock and roll. <laughs> Likes rock and roll. But it, this is the only church on the face of the earth that plays the Doobie Brothers for our call to service. So, that is a guarantee. All right. We do have a couple of painter saints, though, by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. Hey, George and John. And John said, what did John say? I believe in everything until it's disapproved. Disproved. Disproved. <laughs> so I believe in fairies, the myths, dragons, it all exists, even if it's only in your mind. Who's to say that dreams and nightmares aren't as real as here and now? I don't know. I don't know. And George. If all of our national holidays were on were observed on Wednesdays, we could wind up with nine day work e week weekends. Wow. Think about it. Two two days here, yeah, it'd be a long weekend. Ooh, that'd be a long. Weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's still work anyway, right? Yeah. I know, but you have to think back when you worked. I I haven't had a regular job in so many decades that. When you're self-employed, you're just kind of, every, every day, day is a work day. day. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, that right. which has always been right. accepted by everyone, everywhere, is almost certain to be false. Paul Valeri, uh, 1871. And uh, what upsets me is not that you lied to me, but that from now on, I can no longer believe you. Oh, yeah. Nietzsche. Yeah. Nietzsche. Wow. That's true. So, I never read really much, a little bit about Nietzsche, but I've been doing it for a long time here. Yeah. Nietzsche was a very smart character. Yeah. Definitely yeah, he was. said some real sharp stuff. So, uh, the unpopped kernels in a bowl of popcorn. See, you learn stuff with the Divine Fellowship. <laughs> the unpopped kernels in the bowl of a pop, a popcorn are called? Old maids. Woohoo! Old, Old maids. Yeah. Old maids. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to. Yeah, I was going to say, and why did they do that? I don't know. That I don't know. I'll tell you that in private when we get home. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything to begin with. No, you shouldn't. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Anybody best else wants to know, I'll tell you privately. You online, you're on your own. The best place to find a helping hand is at the end of your own arm. And charity begins at home. Uh -huh. so. Yep, 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 yep. Be kind to yourself. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let me see here. Okay. Oh Lord. Here I know. Go. Oh, I know. The truly terrible jokes. Actually, we'll end with those ones. I was all geared up for cringe. <laughs> yeah. Those cringe, are cringe worthy. Cringe. They are cringe worthy. Okay. Um. Uh, people doing things at churches like typing, when they had typewriters, you know, like church bulletins, they're back. Uh, the fasting and prayer conference includes meals. <laughs> Scouts are saving aluminum cans, bottles, and other items to be recycled. Proceeds will be used to cripple children. <laughs> Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. 
It's a chance to get rid of all those things not worth keeping around the house. Bring your husbands. <laughs> you got way too much laughter on that one. I know, I know, I know. Don't let worry kill you, kill you off. Let the church help. <laughs> All right. Did you hear about the man who uh, kicked out of the park uh, for arranging the squirrels by height? No. They didn't like his crit criticizing. <laughs> On my son's fourth birthday, I couldn't even recognize him. I had never seen him before. Oh, jeez. Oh. What do you call a mama cow right after she gives birth? Tired. <laughs> Decaffeinated. Oh. Why did the pony ask for a glass of water? It was a little horse. Yes! <laughs> it was a little horse. I have to tell people online because they can't hear you. Maybe I should have ended with these ones. Yeah, I think you um, should. What do you call if you... you, could. you, could you end on yeah, okay. All right. Um, all right, I will. There's two more. Oh, Phil, you left everybody hanging. <laughs> What kind of paper makes music? Wrapping paper. <laughs> Why did the pianist bang the side of his head against the keyboard? He was playing by ear. <laughs> Where do vampire violinists go for vacation? The vile inn. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, I know. What's the most musical part of a turkey? Drumstick. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you call uh, it if you're haunted by chickens? A poultry geist. <laughs> what did the pig say to the horse? Hey, you got a long face. I didn't say it was good. <laughs> All right. Uh, stupid enough to, oh, um, if the shoe fits, get another one just like it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The things that come to those who wait may be the things left by those who got there first. Oh, yeah. Ah, what the heck, I'll do a couple more. Give a man a fish, and he will eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, and he will sit in the boat all day drinking beer. Uh, <laughs> flashlight, a case for holding dead batteries. Back when batteries actually went dead pretty dang quick. So, God gave you toes as a device for finding furniture in the dark. Oh, oh so true. Yeah, oh, so true. Yeah. When you go into court, you are putting yourself in the hands of 12 people who weren't smart enough to get out of jury duty. <laughs> So we got stuff going on. This I know week. we do. Lots of stuff going we on do. this week. Um, Tuesday, Michelle. That's, that's the day after tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Michelle Lanigan is going to do uh, past lives and reincarnation. A little mini workshop on that. If you want more information on that, let me know. Um, Saturday morning, Cami is going to do healing the sacred self workshop here at the church. Saturday evening, uh, I'm going to do Voices from Beyond. So, What's that? Well, you talk to dead people. <laughs> I see dead people. And then, coming up, we've got a crystal conference. Yes, we do. Uh, Beth made us up some really pretty little flyers, so if you would be so kind as to grab a flyer and post it somewhere where you know people will see it. Mark Humphreys and his wife uh, will be here uh, from over in Portland uh -huh. selling lots of crystals and rocks. They're going to be our only vendor in the back. They'll have the whole place to themselves. They always have good prices. They understand us. We went and saw one of their other businesses at the Rock and Gem Show yesterday, yeah. and they showed us a picture of them standing next to a couple of crystal cathedrals uh, at least 20 feet high. They're amazing. At least. They're amazing. Yeah, I, I was like, I kept having to look at this picture going, holy cow. So if you have any specific things that you want me to ask him to bring, mm -hmm. he's going to bring as much stuff as he can. 
So if you want crystal points or a particular kind of crystal or crystal hearts. Fossils. Or I think he's got fossils, fossils you know, trillobites. All, kinds of, all kinds of stuff. So if you have something that you're really interested in, let me know and I will request him to bring that. We'll also have readers and healers and some lectures mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. So if Something you want for the everybody. schedule, uh, you can look at online for the schedule. It's on the Healing Light Expo, uh, now turning into seminars. Over 20 years and coming for the Crystal Conference. Yes. Wow. Yes. We've been are waiting a while for these. Are you taking names of people that are volunteering to be readers? Uh, yes. I am. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll put you on my list over here. Um, so a, a few weeks ago I did the 23rd Psalm and then people rewrote it so that it fit for them. So I have one today that was written by Annette and uh, I wanted awesome. to share it with you because I think it's awesome. And she says this, Mary Magdalene is my divine cheerleader. She lifts me up. She fills me with an abundance of joy and serenity. She teaches me to calm my mind and find peace in the midst of chaos. She shows me the path to enlightenment and spiritual bliss. She restores my faith in my own intuition. As I walk through the valley of my own shadow, I am freeing myself of the binding of my ego. I retrieve my soul and release my burdens. Isn't that beautiful? Awesome. Let's give her a big hand. Annette, where is Annette? There you are. Thank you, dear. So I'll give you that copy of that. Is there a puppy speaking through her? Yes. Channeling her puppy. Channeling her puppy. That, that might be worth copying and people having a handout. It's really nice. It's it very is, nice. It is very, it is very nice. nice. Uh, I think if more people would show, send me theirs, uh, we'll be able to create a little booklet. Oh, that would be awesome. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes. Because I think we all have, we all have powerful things to say. Yes and to, to apply spiritual stuff so that it applies to my life. That's what it's all about. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I really I care about you, but I don't care about you. Yeah. I, I, it's my journey, my walk, and it's got to work for me. Yeah. So if you haven't had a chance to do the 23rd Psalm, I've got handouts in the back. Um, I'll show you where they are. Um, that will help you translate it into what works for you. And then awesome. if you would write those out and then send them to me or give them to me, that would be great. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have a guest speaker today. We do. We do. And I am so excited for this guest speaker. That's because she doesn't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's because she has some really powerful stuff to say. Yeah. She's going to talk to us a little bit about flowing uh, with spirit and letting the spirit flow with us. And... Uh, Bringing us joy. So please give a good Divine Fellowship welcome to Carrie Hendricks. Just mean I have to move? Yes. Oh, okay. Do you want me? Do you want to stand? Uh, no, I'll sit today. Okay. Thank you. Have a seat now. Anoint you with the microphone. Thank you. There you go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. So this topic's been on my mind um, as I get closer to the end of school and this last month I've experienced some just anxiety and feelings of overwhelm sometimes because it's the end of a chapter, it's going to be the beginning of another chapter, things are still clarifying in my mind about what that looks like. Um, and so it feeling that way for me, it's just uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but <laughs> I feel uncomfortable when I'm, when I feel disconnected a little bit. And, um, so that's where these things come from. Cause I need it. So there we go. Um, so because I'm talking about connecting with spirit in order to move into anything um, that we do. I would like to start with that. So I'm gonna start with a prayer. And so feel comfortable to uh, close your eyes if that's comfortable or let your gaze be soft. Many years ago, I did uh, work in being a prayer practitioner 
And so it's going to be in that particular style. There is one life, one source, one energy, one God, one spirit. That spirit is all life. That spirit is me. It lives in me and as me, flows through me. It is all that I am, all that I have ever been, and all that I will ever be. It is present right now in me, and as it is present in me, is it present in you. What is true for me is true for you. That you are divine source in physical form. And that as such, life flows through you perfectly. Every moment, every experience for your greatest and highest good. And so it is. So, I have, my entire life, I have been a space holder. I didn't know what that was when I was younger. I just was drawn to anyone that needed to be held in some way. And I've talked about this before, but um, other kids, someone being bullied, <coughs> And the first time I really held some serious space was for my own mom. I was 11 years old. And this is, this is a hard story for me. It's an emotional story for me. Um, I was 11 years old when my mom told me that she wasn't sure she could stay with my dad. And where would I want to be if that happened? And it was... Uh, <laughs> you know, we were in a pool, <laughs> I was swimming, <laughs> I was like, what? Um, and I, I don't remember the rest of the conversation that day, but what I know is for the next probably five years, I continued to hold space for my mom. I was the only one she, for a long time, that she felt like she could talk to. And there was a part of me that was like, I am 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Like, I should not have to carry this. And at the same time, I really knew that she didn't have anyone else. And so I did until she started to find her church community and other people that she could be with and hold space for her. And, and with that was a lot of emotion for me, right? Some anger and... It was very complex, very, very complex. And I did, I was doing it all from me because I didn't know, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't raised with being connected to God. Um, it wasn't until I was a little bit older that we started going to unity and I started to, to purposely be able to feel into a connection that was greater than myself. So I've noticed throughout my life, when I feel drawn to hold space for someone, a friend, the need, um, I've had people share with me things, and, and I'm sure I am not alone in this, I'm sure there's lots of empaths in this room, uh, share things with me that they've never shared with anyone ever in their life. Complex things, hard things. And I think I've always known without knowing that that's a big reason I'm here. It's part of my purpose. But I carried so much of it on my own because I, I didn't know completely how to let something larger than me help me to be there, to be present, to carry that. And over time, with practice, I have been more and more connected. When I went to the Abundant Life Center when I was in my 30s, early 30s, it was a metaphysical church in Vancouver, and I met two amazing um, ministers there. 
And that's when I started doing the prayer practitioner work and I went deeper into my own practice. And, and I'll be the first to admit, you know, I, I have a hard time with following through with, you know, deep meditation for hours on end or, or, you know, a yoga practice for my grounding. Um, my grounding really happens through just practicing presence, just acknowledging that there is something greater than myself that I can call on. And when I do that, I expand and I can hold more because I'm not doing the holding because something through me is doing the holding. And when I do that intentionally, things flow better. I can hear what's next for me what feels right for me. And, and most of the big decisions in my life have been made from that place. Like, like becoming a nurse. I think I've told that story. I just knew I was supposed to do that. And I was like, that's insane. I don't like blood. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about doing that. Um, but when I listen to what comes through and I'm connected to that my life flows better and I have more ease. I have more confidence and I just, I feel better. So I know when I'm feeling disconnected or when I'm out of sorts, that that is the place that I need to return to because I'm not, I'm doing too much on my own. You know, I'm trying to do it myself. So even though presence is always there, if I'm not tuned into it like a radio, you know, like, like tuning in purposely so that I can have clarity and I can hear, um, then I, I feel, I feel out of sorts. And so that's, that's just, a, I know, I know when that's happening. And, and I was experiencing that this, you know, last month or so, um, some fear, I think about finishing school and what's next being drawn to like this, this work, being here with you, having a group that I'm starting today after church, um, being present spiritually with people and doing energy work and, and that, and then this, this mental health counseling thing that I've worked really hard to complete and about to start and where is it all going? And yeah, I just was, I was way up here in my head. <laughs> and not here and centered in my heart. And while I was in this space, um, I got a call from a friend who means a lot to me. And they were in real trouble. They were really struggling. And my weekends are usually pretty busy. Things I usually have lots going on, homework, different, whatever it is. And I looked at my calendar and I, I could go be, I could go be with them. So I offered that and it was accepted and I planned that. And I thought, how I'm not, I'm, I'm not centered myself right now. Like what can I offer in this moment? Because I, I have my own stuff going on. So it was a journey to get to my friend and I, pr I did a lot of praying. I said, I need you to help me because I'm not sure what's needed. And all I kept hearing was your presence is what's needed. So I let go of thinking I needed to do anything. And we spent the weekend and I spent the weekend offering my presence and allowing them to in that presence unravel a little bit of what needed to unravel to ground and steady themselves so that they could begin to move forward again. And it was a really good reminder that's not about me 
doing anything or solving. It's about me allowing the presence to be present and hold that space in that way. So it's a pretty simple message today. It's just to encourage you that when you're in that space for yourself and you're unsure, to connect in the ways that you know how to connect, whether that is out in nature or taking a salt bath or meditation, prayer, reaching out to a friend. It is trusting that Source wants for you the best and the highest good. And listening, because I really firmly believe Source, not only I hear things, I'll see things and feel things, but my body is the biggest clue. When it is right for me, yeah, from head to toe, that's, I, I feel it in every part of my body feels it. So know how that is for you, what, how Source speaks to you, speaks truth to you, and then trust it. And know that you are held, you are guided. I uh, have a meditation for today. I kept thinking about this. My mom grew up in church. And even though I didn't, I knew this was her favorite song, and I've certainly heard it, heard it before. But some of you will probably be familiar um, with it. But it's the in the garden, and it, it's. I was reading up on it, and it's supposed to be. It it was inspired, really, a, a spiritual experience that the author had, that the writer songwriter had, and where he felt himself in the presence of that moment when Mary met Jesus after he was crucified. And um, so the song has meaning for the meditation. So I'm just going to read these words for anyone who doesn't know. I come to the garden alone. I'd sing it, but you don't want me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> While the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear Falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. You are never alone. Ever. Let's see if I can get through this meditation. <laughs> Such a baby. That's what we love about you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to a garden, a sacred garden today. So I invite you to feel your presence where you're sitting your body connected to the chair, to the bench, and your feet on the ground. And you can let your gaze get soft or close your eyes. Connecting with the breath, which is our connection with life, this life. And allowing source to flow down through the energy portal above your head, filling your body and your heart space, flowing out and down through your feet into the ground, grounding you. And from the space, I want you to imagine you're walking a path. It's a beautiful path on a beautiful day where the temperature is just right. 
There's some sun filtering through trees. And ahead of you, you see very tall, beautiful hedges and an opening and a light coming from that opening that calls you forward. And you find yourself walking through the hedges into the most beautiful garden you've ever seen. It's made just for you. There are flowers. There's water running. Birds. Squirrels. It's life. It is a sacred space. You see a bench and you go to sit down. And as you sit, just enjoying the garden around you, breathing in the scent of the flowers, you notice a presence that joins you, sitting right next to you on the bench. <coughs> it doesn't have form, but it has light. It is love in its purest form. It is source. It is spirit. It is the essence of who you connect with as your light. And you feel its presence emanating love. And you feel peace deep in your soul. This presence seems to move into you, not just next to you or around you, but into the very center of your being. There is no separation between you and your source. You can feel it. fill you, surround you, carry you. And in this presence, any concern, any worry falls away. You just feel it draining down through you and out into the ground below where it's healed. And when you feel filled up, you thank your source. And you do not feel Source move out of you because Source will always stay present. You take this feeling with you. As you stand, knowing you can come back to the garden at any time. And when it feels right to you, you can Leave the garden the way you came. And walk down the path. And enter this time and this space.
Does anyone want to share? Does anyone have an experience they want to share? Source sent an ancient one to me. Mm. And as he sat on the bench, he looked at me and then he took me in his arms. And I didn't merge with him. He had me merged with him rather than the opposite. So that I felt like I was part of him. And it gave me hope and an immense amount of love. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> I've had a rough morning today, just one of those Kabbalah mornings, and when I'm going to say Jesus because that's who he is to me. He sat next to me. I just felt that familiar feeling and I so needed it. And that merging of this is who you are, this is who I am, this is who we are together, and this is the love. This is the love that you are, this is the love that you give, and it heals you. Thank you. So thank you, Carrie. Well, the garden is where I always go to with any meditation. And that was my mother's favorite song as well. And grew up with singing that sometimes in the field by myself, laying on the ground looking up at the sky, and I would just start singing it. So I always knew that in the garden was a safe place. It was a place of love and comfort. and. Um, we didn't have much to say to each other because we were embracing the energy that we were sensing back and forth to each other. And it was almost like, doesn't this feel wonderful? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, it truly can be that place for us. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful. That song was my mother's favorite as well. And I can remember her uh, doing a solo in church and not even realizing how pretty her voice was, but the song always touches me whenever I hear it. When I was in the garden at the time, my mother was sent to me. I lost her a few years back and we weren't always on the best of terms towards the end, but all I felt was this immense love. And I knew it was coming from the source. It might have appeared as my mother, or it might have been my mother with the source. I don't know. But I was totally absorbed in it, and it was wonderful. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. There's a little girl in pink. Can you change your mind? <laughs> Someone totally random. How did it feel? Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Um, this place means a lot to me, and your support and your love mean a lot to me. Um, so thank you for allowing me to share uh, my journey, and just know that we're all in this together. Yeah. Uh -huh. so. Thank you, Carrie. Yep. Yeah. That was lovely. That in the garden is one of my favorites myself. Come on up, Phil. So we're gonna do a communion. Didn't Elvis Presley have a 
version of that? I don't know. Probably. 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 Yours is right there. So um, we're doing communion. If you haven't done so yet, there's uh, individual communions uh, on the back table. So we're going to start with the little wafer first. Got it? No, 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 no. Thank you. So far, no. <laughs> There's gluten free and regular. That's a good, that's good to be. At that point, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's tasteless. Um, <laughs> join us in prayer, would you please? Loving Spirit of Light, thank you for being with us. Thank you for flowing into our being. Help us to go with the flow. Help us to recognize your presence. Help us to be present in our own lives. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. 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 Get you started. Although now your hands are probably better than mine. I know, they might be. Phil had surgery on his hands a year ago. Hello. Let's go. There we go. Join us in prayer again, please. Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it, all of it, and know that within every drop of life, you're there. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen. You go right ahead. We don't demand that you give. We ask if you feel the need or want to give to help. But know that just your blessings are enough and they're heard. And we appreciate that. And I'd also, I'd like to say that if anybody here wants a piano, I have one that I'm giving away. All you have to do is come and get it. Thank you. You know, Nikki and Alex, they might want that. I'll, I'll check with them. Because he likes piano. So we got a busy week coming up. Who was it we were talking to that knew Peggy? Yeah. She's pretty popular. Yeah. <clears throat> that Phil, what can I say? So let's do an energetic circuit for the folks online, and then we'll do our energy circle here. So our hands together really, really fast. You're still connected into that flow. And we're gonna let that flow flow through us and through our heart space into our left hand, left hand back to the right hand, and then from the right hand back to your heart. This completes an energetic circuit. And this energetic circuit will allow the energy to build and you'll actually feel it between your hands. And as you're allowing this energy to, to build and as this energy Bills. This is not your energy. This is that sacred divine energy that you have a right to receive, that you have a right to hold. 
and that can bless. Bring that into your heart space. Go with the flow. Have a great week, and we will see you next time. God bless. Bye. And let's all circle up.